Hi. Today I'd like to show you how to create a reusable style sheet that you can give to your users and it will automatically install itself in whatever application it's included in. So I've started here with a, a completely empty project. The only thing I've made sure of is to include Tornado FX 155 and uh, I've set a, a group ID and artifact ID. So this is uh, uh, the package I will give to, to my users. All right, so let's start by creating a style sheet. And this demo is not really about styling, so I'll make this real simple. We're just going to make a, a button look a bit uh, flat. So we'll call it flat styles. It will extend style sheet. And we will add some, some uh, simple styles to a button. So we'll start by uh, giving it a background color. Dark gray, for example, or actually just gray, and uh, we'll make it uh, uh, flat. So we have to set the corner background radius, and this will be completely flat in all edges. And uh, we need uh, a border, and we'll make it a bit thick. So two pixels on all borders. And uh, border color could be, for example, dark gray. Okay, so we got some basic styles. Let's uh, set up a small view so we can test this. So we'll just call this uh, test view. We'll call it button test. And uh, this will just be a stack pane. The stack pane will have some padding. So this is just, just so you can see the button before we we uh, we give it away. So we'll set the padding to uh, say 50 pixels on all edges, and just add a button in there. So this button will say "Click me." Now we can try to run it. And of course, nothing's going to happen because we didn't apply these styles. So instead of now importing this uh, explicitly, we're going to use a new feature in Tornado FX 155, which allows you to, uh, to uh, load style sheets using the service loader. So we need to create a meta inf services folder. In here, we'll create a file called Tornado FX Style Sheet. And here, we'll just mention our Flat Styles class, so like this. Before I rerun, I'm also going to make this uh, reload style sheets on the fly. OK, so let's try it. So now it works. So let's style it just a bit further. So I'll place it here on the side so you can see it. And uh, we'll add some, uh, we'll make the font a bit bolder and the size a bit bigger. So maybe 30 pixels. And notice we don't need to re reload our application now to see the changes. So this is pretty good, but we're also gonna add a button skin so we can add some effects uh, because some things you can't express with CSS, like uh, some kind of a, an animation or something. So um, let's add a, a skin to this button. We'll call this uh, flat button skin. It needs to take a button and it needs to extend button skin. And we need to pass it that button. So in, in it, we can do some basic stuff like uh, adding an event filter for uh, uh, mouse entered, for example. And let's do something crazy like saying animate the opacity to 0.6 in 0.3 seconds whenever mouse the mouse is entered into this control. And then we would have to go the other way as well. Now, this is not a best practice in any way, but just to, to show you how it works, I will we'll do this very simple. So mouse exited, we will animate the opacity back to 1.0. 
in the style sheet now we have to make sure that buttons will use the skin. So we'll just say skin is flat button skin class. Now this will probably not be picked up uh, automatically. Oh, actually it does. Great. That's even better. So now we have connected this skin to buttons as long as you have this style sheet loaded, right? Okay, so uh, since we already added this uh, service declaration, once someone includes this style sheet in their application, it should load automatically. So to try this, we will install it in our local repo. And we need to remember our coordinates. So it's com example theme 1.0. So let's make a new project and base it on, yeah, just an empty template. Uh, it doesn't matter what it's called. So if we try to run this, uh, the view we get when we uh, create a project based on this uh, default template, of course, this time it's not going to be enabled by default because we haven't included it. And also we don't have a button to show, so we would have to add that. So let's add a button in here. We'll call it Quick Me again. Try to run again. We can, well, actually not inside a label. We'll add it here and remove this label, I think. And uh, let's try and run again. And just to sh see that we have the button. Okay, great. Now we'll add the start sheet dependency. So we'll add the dependency on the theme we created. But not this one, com example 1.0 and rerun. As you can see, the start sheet was automatically picked up and installed, and the user didn't have to do anything but include the dependency. Okay, hope you liked it. Bye.